These images are represented in terms of numbers. Eric Postma directed the technical presentation. The purpose of the project was to look at these paintings and try to uh, determine if we could uh, distinguish between real and fake Van Gogh's. The computer scientists focused on one of the most revealing traits of Van Gogh's work. As the museum's head conservator, Ella Hendricks, showed us, it's the way he applied paint to his canvas. I would tend to really want to get close and look at um, these, for example, these very nice white strokes in the foreground mm. that were added at a, a late stage. And if you look very close, you can see these sort of trailing drips of paint as he literally scooped up the paint from the canvas, lifting his brush and then carrying the trail of paint. It turns out that Van Gogh's brush strokes are crucial markers not only for critics and connoisseurs, but for computers as well. The pattern of brush strokes is very specific and very indicative of a painter. So the first selection that you make when you start to analyze these paintings digitally is to select the level of individual brush strokes. The computer scientists create programs which examine a painting from different angles to determine the direction of each brush stroke. Collecting the brushstroke patterns from more than 100 paintings establishes a baseline for Van Gogh's style. But could the computer be fooled? Could an artist specially trained to copy the old masters duplicate Van Gogh's style? To find out, we commissioned Charlotte Caspers to carefully imitate every detail of Van Gogh's brushstrokes. She's an expert in art reconstruction, using historical materials to copy famous paintings so museums can decide how to preserve the originals. The best would have been to sit next to the painting, but, well, that was just not uh, possible. The Van Gogh Museum doesn't allow artists to paint in front of the originals, so she made her own photos of the Reaper. I couldn't bring the painting home, <laughs> so I, I had to take a, a picture, and when it's a digital one, you can blow it up on your computer, so that was what I did. Knowing that the scientists would be focused on the pattern of Van Gogh's brushstrokes, Charlotte's job was to perfectly match his technique. I had a picture next to my canvas I was painting on, and I could blow that up so I could have a close look at the paint surface of the original painting from a picture. How do you think that trying to be him ultimately influenced the painting itself? It's um, less spontaneous. I was just switching all the time my eyes from my canvas to the picture and trying to, uh, to do what he did. The charcoal, I did his outlines and the other folds in the indication of the face. And then I added uh, shadows. And then after that I did something with uh, the dark lines. the highlights and the outlines and I did the birds and the end. That was the last thing. It was fun to do. We had a young artist mm -hmm. uh, copy one of one of yeah. one of the uh, the master's paintings. Mm -hmm. did, you, did you get to see the I comments? did get to see it, yeah. What did you think? I think she did a remarkable job because it's very, she's um, made a very accurate copy of the rhythm of the brush strokes, but managed to do it in a spontaneous way. So um, do you think uh, she has a shot against the computers? I think it will be a challenge, yeah. The challenge begins by turning Charlotta's copy of the Reaper into a color photograph, which is then turned into a high resolution black and white scan. Identified only by catalog number, it takes its place beside five real Van Gogh paintings, creating Nova Science Now's test for three computer teams, Penn State University, Princeton University, and Maastricht University. Eric Postma leads the Maastricht team. So here's a famous Van Gogh. Yeah. Van Gogh. Van Gogh. Van Gogh. Van Gogh. Van Gogh. Uh, the sower. The sower. <laughs> However you want to say it. How do you begin? So you, you look at this, it's a beautiful painting, but you're going to strip it of its beauty, uh, one layer of its beauty right now. Yeah, in fact, we do, because we translate the entire painting into numbers. Postma software scans the whole painting, identifying areas of contrast. 
the more contrast, like the dark tree branch against the light sky, the larger the number assigned by the computer. If the contrast is less extreme, like the edge of the sun against the sky, the number is smaller. When all the contrast patterns are combined, a statistical portrait of Van Gogh's style is created. Well, these are genuine Van Goghs, and this is a known fake, the so-called Walker fake. The faker tried too hard to, uh, to uh, mimic Van Gogh. And by trying too hard, that means too much. Too much. Too much. Too much. Exactly. I see. Someone copying Van Gogh paints too many brush strokes to get it right, and the computer identifies them as areas of higher contrast. First, the program analyzes the brush strokes from six different angles, then combines them to reveal areas where they overlap. More overlapping brush strokes show up as brighter areas. Fewer overlaps are dark. Look at this famous painting Van Gogh did of his bedroom. As the computer separates out each angle, it highlights the brush strokes painted in that direction. Putting them all together reveals a brush stroke map of the painting. Now look at the Walker forgery. The computer identifies more overlapping brush strokes in every direction. Ten times as many as the Van Gogh bedroom. The genuine Van Gogh paintings display fewer brush strokes than the forgery. If you deliberately try to mimic Van Gogh, then it's not natural anymore. And then you tend to overdo it. And this overdoing it results in high numbers. And that could be one way of detecting a fake. I, I'd like to see what the zoom-in gives there. Ingrid Dobshi and the Princeton team have also been looking at the six paintings in our test, searching for the fake. Okay, so... Mm. so if you try to make a copy, you would pay so much attention to what you're doing that you probably paint it more slowly and with more restrained hand than Van Gogh himself would have painted. And we expect that to transfer as well. For James Wang and Gia Lee from Penn State University, Charlotta's copy seemed to blend in with the other five paintings. Just by looking at the pictures, they all look very Van Gogh. So that's why later we also tried a statistical modeling approach. So you get a kind of segmentation of the paintings. All the science teams had less than a week to distinguish the fake from the real Van Gogh's. Typical brush strokes. I think we see more contrast in the grooves than in the ridges. Oh, yeah. They... This white thing is showing through. Oh, yeah. Would they pick the sunflowers? The sower? Any of the other three genuine Van Goghs? Or would any of their computer programs successfully choose Charlotta's version of the Reaper? The analysis is finished, and it's time to take her painting to the Van Gogh Museum, where the scientists are waiting. Okay, the moment of truth. Uh -huh. Do you all have an answer? Yes. Yes. We're ready to bring in the artist? Yes. yes. Okay, Charlotta. This is Charlotte Casper. She painted the painting that you guys tested. Oh, very, very nice to meet you. Yep. Do you want to come on over and reveal it? Well, bring it on over. Don't open it yet. Bring it, bring it on over, Charlotte. <laughs> All right, so what do y'all got? 687. 687. Right. 687. The one. Uh, you guys <laughs> match. <laughs> That's two for 687? And that's three for 687. Ah, yeah. All right, that's your final answer. You're sticking with it. Yes, it is. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Charlotte, let's see. Okay, let's yes, see. Yes, yes, wow. yes. Oh, yes, yes. Wow. Yes. <laughs> 687, the Reaper. Got it, got it. <laughs> so how long uh, did it take for you to finish the pen? I worked two days on this one. How long did it take you to analyze the thing? <laughs> oh, we, we took two days to. <laughs> <laughs> Van Gogh himself completed many of his most famous paintings in two days or less. And they've kept art collectors and experts busy for more than a century. They're not there yet, but computers will ultimately speed the process along. The most valuable thing about these techniques is that they can help art experts. You just can scan over the entire painting and they do it in a completely unbiased way. And that's the great advantage of computers. <laughs>